Hey guys, before I start showing you amazing add-ons, I want to remind you that the first Godot add-on jam is currently running until January 31st. If you're interested, head to the itch page, link in the description. Let's start with a simple but amazing add-on for 3D users. Blender 3D Shortcuts by AMGP94. If you've ever used Blender, you've probably learned the different shortcuts to move, rotate, scale, etc. Well, with this add-on, you have all of that inside Godot now. G to move, R to rotate, S to scale, H to hide, and the ability to choose one axis and much more. You even have the ability to easily toggle between global and local transform by double pressing the axis you want to move in. I won't go over all the things that you can do, but trust me, just try it and you'll see how working in 3D with Godot just becomes easier with this add-on. For those that entered the add-on jam, this is an amazing example of a feature that could be inside Godot, but can easily be tested as an add-on first. If you have dialogues in your game, you probably know the very popular add-on Dialogic. Let me present to you Godot Dialog Plugin by Anidem Dex, another way to create and manage dialogues in Godot. This add-on looks very well made with a wonderful GitHub page with documentation, videos and examples. The add-on is actively being worked on, so if you need dialogues in your game, I highly recommend checking it out. Maybe you've heard of super sampling techniques like NVIDIA DLSS and AMD Fidelity FX. The latter is open source and we'll probably have it in Godot in the future. In the meantime, Godot Super Scaling is a custom open source implementation by Cyber Reality. It allows you to downscale or upscale your game with few noticeable loss in quality. The main advantage can be to run the game at a lower resolution for performance reasons and use the add-on to upscale the image to 1080p or 1440p for example. This allows less powerful computer to run the game at higher resolution without everything being blurry or bad looking. If you're interested, there is a demo on itch where you can play around the various settings and also a video on YouTube with some explanations. Cyber Reality also made a proposal on GitHub to integrate this technique into GoToCore. Check it out if you're interested. You're making a card game or you want to make one? Don't worry, Braindate BZH got you covered with Godot Card Engine, an add-on for card-based games. This will allow you to focus on your game and not on the card handling part. You'll find animations, drag and drop, various events with handling the cards and much more. Please note that the add-on is currently under development, so some things might not work exactly as expected. This add-on, Godot Clipboard Panel by Thane5, is a perfect example of a simple add-on that can reduce friction when you want to work with Godot. It allows you to have unlimited text containers as custom editor panels where you can store text and then retrieve it by clicking on a button. It's the kind of things that can make your life so much easier and it's pretty easy to implement. Well done for this simple and effective add-on. Talking about handy add-ons to reduce friction, let's take a look at Godot Instance Dock by KobeWee. This one adds a dock where you can store scenes to quickly use them later. Then you simply drag and drop them in your scene and voila! Everything is based around drag and dropping, so you can easily add scenes to the dock, rearrange them and use them later. Clearly, this is a very cool add-on that seems super useful when designing levels. You know that sound is important in game and adding variety is important, but it's a pain to do it yourself. That's where Random Audio Stream Player by Tim Criff comes in. This allows you to play different audio at random, choose the random strategy, and also randomize volume and pitch. This is super useful and there's no need to do it yourself because it's neatly done in a custom node. This eighth add-on is not very useful, but so much fun. If you watch Johnson on Twitch, you've probably seen it already. Ridiculous Coding by Johnson is a ridiculous add-on that adds visual effects, screen shake, and sound effects right inside the Godot editor when you type. That's it. That's the add-on. It's just super fun, and I wanted to include it in this video to show you that add-ons don't have to be super serious or useful. I'd love to see more goofy add-ons like this in the future. You are making tutorials or teaching how to use Godot? Then check out Godot Screencast Keys by Doodle. You simply add the Screencast Keys node to your scene and the key presses will appear on your screen. On the node itself, you can decide where the keys are going to appear and also the max number of keys that should appear on screen. Pretty useful, especially if you're using a lot of shortcuts during your presentations. 
Jam Countdown by Andres Gamboa is a very specific add-on that can be especially useful, well, during jams. It simply adds a timer on the top right of the editor. You can configure the jam title and the end date, and then boom, you have your own little timer right inside Godot. This can be especially useful for short jams and if you're streaming your process online. I'll probably use this one next time I'm streaming a jam. This add-on can be very useful if you need a weapon menu, for example. Go to Radial Menu by Taverth is a very cool add-on and super easy to use. You add the Radial Menu node and then simply add buttons to it. It has support for signals such as Hovered and Selected, so you don't have to write custom logic. You can check the GitHub page for the various settings that are available, like the size, the colors, etc. The last add-on of this showcase is awesome if you work in 3D. Godot PLY by Jarnison is an in-editor box modeling. What does that mean, you might say? Well, it allows you to create 3D models by extruding, scaling, and moving vertices around right inside Godot. This can be tremendously useful to prototype levels with Godot. CSG nodes are cool, but also pretty slow in some cases. With this add-on, you simply create your model step-by-step, step, just like if you were 3D printing it. And you know what's even cooler? It will automatically update the collisions if you put a collision shape as a child, meaning that when you're done editing, you can jump right into testing. This is definitely a time saver when working with 3D. It's a very new add-on and in active development, so if you're interested, go check it out now. I hope you like the add-ons I showcased today. If you have a cool add-on that you want to share, please do it in the comments below. Please don't include links as YouTube will automatically remove those comments. I try to show a variety of add-ons with complex ones but also very unique and focused ones that you can reproduce. If you're interested in getting your hands dirty with add-ons development, you still have time to join the first edition of the Godot add-on jam. It's running from January 20 until January 31. Check out the itch page, link in the description. Don't forget to join the Discord if you want to discuss the jam or anything else, I hope to see you in the submissions and we'll see each other in the post-jam showcase video. In the meantime, have a great day and I'll see you later. Bye!